Hey everyone, I'm Kelly with the SuburbanSoapbox.com and today we are making a super simple lobster bisque. This lobster bisque is ultra rich and creamy, but it's also a little light. It's perfect for holiday entertaining or for your special Valentine. Let's get started. To start your lobster bisque, you're going to take four, about four ounce lobster tails, and you can get these frozen in your seafood department at the grocery store, and then you're just gonna let them thaw until they're pliable, just like this. It's really similar to what I did when I made the lobster tails in the oven on a prior video. So we're just going to put them into a pot of boiling water and you wanna have two cups of water in there. And the reason you need two cups is because you're gonna use that same steaming liquid as your lobster stock. So you're basically making like a mock lobster stock. So we're gonna grab all of those juices that come out of your lobster meat and use it to flavor your lobster bisque. So we're just gonna put those in for about five minutes and put the lid on and we're gonna steam them until they're bright red and the lobster meat is opaque. The other ingredients that you're going to use for your lobster bisque are fennel. I love, love, love fennel now. I used to hate it. It kind of has an anise flavor, which if you're not familiar with that, it's kind of like a black licorice. So if you've had a bad experience with Sambuca, like on a long night, you may not like this. You can totally leave it out. I've gotten used to the flavor and I actually really like it now, but there was a moment in time when I did not like it. So this is going to be your kind of secret ingredient for your lobster bisque. You're also going to need an onion. I like to use a sweet Vidalia onion and one lemon, some garlic, fire roasted tomatoes. These are diced tomatoes that have been roasted over an open fire. You get this nice smoky flavor with it. If you can't find fire roasted tomatoes, regular diced tomatoes are perfectly fine. You want chicken stock and some half and half, heavy cream, which we're gonna mix into the end to make it like rich and creamy and buttery, some tomato paste for added burst of flavor, thyme and a bay leaf. You also want white wine. So I know I have a rosé here. This is what I have today. It's great for flavoring a lobster bisque because it's sweet and it gives it a really nice back note. But if you wanna use something drier, you can use a dry Chardonnay or like some other white wine. Just stick with a white wine or a lighter color wine because you don't wanna change the, the color too much. So while we're waiting for our lobsters to boil, we're going to cut up our vegetables. Now that our vegetables are chopped, we can check our lobster. And we just wanna make sure that it's cooked so that we can just take it out, remove all that meat once our soup's done and then toss it back in at the end so you have the big, nice, buttery chunks of lobster in your soup. Once our lobsters are done cooking, we're going to take them out and just transfer them to a platter. And you just want them to cool off slightly so that they're easy enough for you to handle so that you can take that meat out of the shell. But look how beautiful they are. They're bright red. You could totally just eat them now and dip them in butter. Now remember when I said we're going to save the steaming liquid. We're going to put a strainer onto the side or you can use like your regular strainer and we're going to pour the steaming liquid, strain it, into a bowl and then we're going to save that liquid for our stock. Now we'll add the butter to the pan and you can use olive oil if you like, but the butter is gonna give it a richer flavor and I was too lazy to get the olive oil out of the cabinet. Butter has a much lower burn point so you're going to wanna keep an eye on it. I'm gonna turn the heat up to about medium high to melt the butter and then we're going to add the onions. Is there anything better than sauteed onions, the smell of sauteed onions with butter? They should make a candle. I probably have said that before, but I love that smell. 
Once your onions become translucent and kind of softened, then we'll add the fennel. While we're waiting for the fennel to cook down, we're going to mince up some garlic. And just give that a mix. And cook for about one minute until you start to smell the garlic. Now we're gonna add tomato paste. It's about two tablespoons, but I don't really measure too much when it comes to cooking. The only time I really measure things precisely is when I'm baking, but when you're cooking, if you like a lot of tomato flavor, add more. So you're just gonna cook that until the tomato paste starts to take on like a dark burgundy color. If you let the vegetables and the tomato paste and everything sit for a little bit, you're gonna get some of those brown bits on the bottom from the tomato paste kind of like cooking on and caramelizing right to the pot. That's just so much more flavor too. So now we're going to add wine. And like I said in the beginning, you can use a regular white wine, something dry like a Chardonnay, but today I'm using a rosé because I like the sweetness that it adds to the creamy soup. So now we're gonna use that wine to deglaze the bottom of the pan. So you wanna scrape up any brown bits that are in the bottom of the pan. It's going to add to the flavor. Now we're gonna add the aromatics. So we're gonna add thyme and some bay leaf and some seasonings. I like to use a little bit of cayenne pepper. It is a really nice heat on the back of the tongue. It's not overpowering at all. And also paprika. I really like to add cayenne to cream soups because it kind of takes away a little bit of the richness. It doesn't taste overly rich, and it's certainly not too spicy if you just put a little bit in there. Now we're going to make the soup part, and to the pot, we're going to add three cups of chicken stock. This is what I never understand, is that one carton should be like three cups or four cups, and it never is. It's always a little bit left in there. And we're going to add the diced tomatoes with the juice. You want that flavor in there as well. And then we're going to return the reserved steaming liquid that we used for the lobsters. And then you're just gonna bring that to a boil and let it simmer for a little bit so that the flavors can kind of marry together. So now I'm gonna clean up and we're gonna wait for that to simmer and then we'll add our lobster. Now we're ready to blend our soup together. We're going to use a, an immersion blender. If you don't have one of these, these are super handy and you can get them fairly inexpensively. They're great for blending soups or making a personal smoothie like right in a glass. I would get one, but if you don't have one and you have a blender or a food processor, you can certainly transfer the soup to your blender. Just be really careful when you blend any type of hot liquid in a blender because it does create a suction and that hot liquid can blow out all over your kitchen, burning you, making a mess. Just, it's never a good scene. So if you're going to put this in the blender, put a towel over the top and hold the lid on while you're blending this. But again, I can't say enough good things about an immersion blender. So many, so many uses. So we wanna fish out the bay leaf because you can't really eat a bay leaf. You can't digest it. So we're taking that out. And I also don't want it to clog up my immersion blender. And then we're going to blend everything. Okay, so we have a few pieces stuck to the end of the blender. I just wanna give it a stir to make sure that I got the bulk of the chunks and that frothiness on top will definitely settle down. You can see some of the thyme leaves that are still in there. It's gonna be really good. I like to season it with salt and pepper at the end. Now we can turn the heat off. This is where we're going to add the cream. So you don't want your soup to be sitting over scorching heat. You don't want that cream to curdle and it will be infinitely better if you have had your half and half and your cream out to kind of get the chill off so that when you put it in here, it's not hot and cold and everything is like getting confused and curdling and it's never a good scene. I think that's a common mistake that people make when they make a cream soup. 
Before you add the dairy, we're going to add the lemon. So you wanna add your lemon juice. Now we're gonna stir in our cream and half and half. So this is a half a cup of half and half. And then we're going to do one cup of heavy cream. And there it is. It looks so amazing and creamy and light and perfect. If you want it a little bit thicker, you can take a little bit of room temperature butter and mix it together with two tablespoons of cornstarch. So do like one tablespoon of butter with two tablespoons of cornstarch and whisk that together until it's smooth and then stir that in there and it'll definitely thicken and tighten up your bisque. So now we're going to take the lobster meat out of the shells and cut it up. You can definitely put the lobster meat right into the bisque. It's going to sink right to the bottom. So I like to put it in the bottom of a bowl and put the bisque in a pitcher or ladle it right over into the bowl on the lobster meat. It makes a great presentation if you're having guests. And if you see anything in the lobster that needs to be removed, sometimes they're not cleaned as well as you might like, like that, you wanna take that out. So we'll just peel that out. I'm not gonna talk about what that is either. But we'll just cut it up and put it in our bowl. And if you can't find lobster tails, a whole lobster works really well too. And then you have the dramatic presentation with the lobster claws on top. I did that on my website when I took the pictures. I used a whole lobster, I cooked it myself. You can get the instructions for cooking a whole lobster at the suburbansoapbox.com. And that's a great way to use up any leftover lobster, but who really has leftover lobster? Like honestly, get a ladle. See you ladle. Okay, I'm a dork, I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> okay, you put your lobster in the bottom of the bowl. These two lobster tails, make sure they're cleaned well. And then we're gonna ladle our soup over the lobster. If you remember the fennel fronds from earlier that we saved, you can just put them right on top. They just look really pretty, kind of like a restaurant. See, you don't need to go out to a restaurant. You can make this stuff at home. Okay, and now I'm gonna take a bite. Cannot wait. Dying for this all day. Mm. That is so good. It's not overly creamy or rich. It's the perfect balance of tanginess and creaminess with just a hint of the brininess from the lobster. This is the perfect lunch, dinner, holiday dinner, whatever you want it to be. You definitely have to try this. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give me a like and subscribe to our channel. For more easy recipes, visit thesuburbansoapbox.com. Thanks again.